Our TJ Parker tells us where this investigation stands this morning. Hi, good morning. As you can imagine, police have a lot of questions for this case after that woman was found dead miles away from her home. This is a tough anniversary, as you can imagine, for Arlene Alvarez's family, who two years ago were just heading to a Valentine's Day dinner. We just got here in the past 20 minutes. We heard about this and immediately raced over here to the airport to see what we could see. And you could see uh, from our vantage point here along this uh, perimeter fence, not too far from the United Terminal, this United flight. Now that the sun is coming up, guys, we're getting a better sense of just how bad the flooding is here along 1485. This is 1485 at the San Jacinto River. The water here continues to rise. We have been here since four this morning. I want to show you this is Hamblin Road and if you're familiar with this area in Kingwood, this floods pretty consistently. Well, inspectors shut down the Lazy River on Monday only to return back to this hotel yesterday and found even more violations. He's actually just got off the phone first of all with uh, Tim Miller with Texas Equisearch who are out here. He actually told me he is now heading to a new location along US 59 near the San Jacinto River. Definitely some scary moments for those people and this didn't just happen to one family but two families who live next door to each other. Those things are going to fall. They're going to catch some fire and look how it's not even 20 feet away from the building. Sure enough when it fell it fell and they're, they're still there. As power comes back to businesses and homes in Montrose, the people living at the Gardens apartment wait as they continue to swelter in the Houston heat. And now they're also concerned with this, a downed power pole that is still smoldering. They're concerned it could spark a fire if not taken care of. There's other wires that that we don't know if it's still alive against that tree. We don't know whatever that wire is that comes down. It looks like it's cable, but we're not electricians and I tell people stay away because we don't know. I can't handle the fear of fire because yeah. my life is in that condo yeah. and I don't have time to pack up my life. Your life and so many others too. Yeah, and so, well, exactly. yeah. so many others. There's people who wouldn't be able to get out. There's pets who wouldn't be able to get out. Correct. It's Tenants of this 62 unit apartment building, many who have lived here for decades, say the Houston Fire Department has been out here. Many of them have also reached out to Centerpoint to try and get answers as to when they'll get their power back. It's a hub for the LGBTQ community. Um, they are they tend to be the elderly people who don't have anywhere else to go. I've been most afraid for them. Um, I mean, if I had to get out of here after the first night and take my my cat with me, I don't know how they have managed. This place has been here since 1964. So it has seen Allison. It has seen a lot of stuff. We're all just kind of trying to band together and, you know, figure out how to how to get by and how to take care of each other. This morning, two people are dead after Missouri City Police say one of their own crashed into them while they were on their way to a robbery in progress. I seen a police were flying down the street and hit that car. I went and checked on the victim and I called the police and said, hey, these people's over here is dead. I heard a vehicle at a, at a high rate of speed and, and then I heard a loud boom like an explosion. I looked out the glass and I seen a bunch of smoke. The police officers didn't even know the people was in the, in the car dead yet. I, I let them know that they was dead already. Also inside the police cruiser was someone in the back seat. DPS is the one that actually spotted them because if it was Missouri City Police that uh, seen them, they would have been had them out. So apparently the uh, Missouri City Police didn't care about checking the back seat of the of, uh, their units because the other officers should have said that they had he had a victim in a, in a car. We are not sure at this time why he was in there or the circumstances surrounding him being in the vehicle in the first place. A lot of unanswered questions and now Texas DPS is involved and investigating. He shouldn't have been going that fast in a 40 miles an hour zone. And the cop was going extremely too fast. I mean, for them to be dead on, dead on impact, mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty fast. Well, people are cleaning up after storms ripped through Angleton on Friday here at Mulligan's. This is all that's left of the golf center here. And from the looks of this, it's a miracle that nobody was hurt. We were in full swing as a Friday night getting ready for a busy night. It was a typical Friday night at Mulligan's Golf Center when strong storms rolled into town. Surveillance video shows employees taking quick action, ushering customers to safety. And that's when the storm took a turn for the worse. Once it started hailing, they actually grabbed the customers and everybody went in towards the freezer area, you know, 
because that's the safe area. So I told him to keep everybody there. And then when the when it calmed down, it was just an eerie calm. And at that time, the whole front and the sides, everything just blew out all at one time. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Across town, trees and branches were down and debris from buildings littered the streets. Power crews worked for hours to restore power after thousands of people lost it. Me and my husband were in the backyard uh, and, and then we went to the garage and it was trying to suck us out. It was the worst thing I've ever been through. Cherry Cole doesn't believe there was enough warning for this storm. We were not prepared. Really? Even though we had the siren, I mean, the phones going off, we didn't think we were taking a direct hit like this. Back at Mulligan's, which Lonnie and his wife have owned for the past five years, they say there's no telling yet what's next for them. This is, uh, I mean, it's personal. This is me and my wife's, you know, we're the owners of this. It's, this is our investment. It's everything we've got. And again, as the cleanup begins here in Angleton, the Brazoria County Dispatch tells us the good news is nobody was seriously hurt. Here in Angleton, I'm TJ Parker, KPRC 2 News.